All right, the kids are released, and the rest of us, let's open our Bibles, please, to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. If you're visiting, welcome once again. Happy Mother's Day to you all. Happy and blessed Mother's Day. We're going to be finishing off the, uh, the, the chapter 12 here in the book of Romans. Uh, today we're going to be looking at verses 17 through 21 and then continue on to verse or chapter 13 next week. Lord willing, we're all here. Uh, so Romans chapter 12, verses 17 through 21. Let's go ahead and we'll read that and then we'll pray. Romans 17, 12, verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by doing so you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let's pray. Father, as we come once again to your word, Lord, we ask that you would soften our hearts by your spirit, that we would receive these commands, Lord, in love, Lord, uh, in instruction, Lord, that you would give us your spirit afresh to understand these commands and walk in love and obedience to them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So once again, even as we're finishing up chapter 12, uh, we still need to look to the beginning of chapter 12 to see what the context is and what Paul is talking about. So if you'll just glance back with me at verse 1 here of chapter 12. Uh, 1 and 2, verses 1 and 2, it says this, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so as we continue to look at what it means uh, to be a living sacrifice unto the Lord, uh, to have our minds transformed by the Word of God through His Holy Spirit, uh, He's basically been going through and giving us things, telling us things to do, telling us things not to do. And we all know that if we don't do these things and we do these things, we will keep our salvation. No. Anybody? Anybody pay attention out there? You guys should have just stoned me right there. No, no, no. We're not doing these things to gain our salvation. We're not doing these things to keep our salvation. Uh, we're saved by the grace of God. Uh, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Uh, and even that is a gift. Uh, so we're saved completely by the cross of Jesus Christ. We do these works because we love God. We do these works because we now have a new nature within us, a new nature that is reprogramming us, if you will. We've been born anew of the Spirit of God. Now, as he continues this morning, we kind of come into the middle of these uh, things to do and not to do, uh, to ways to act as a Christian. Notice verse 17. Uh, Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Now, the New Living Translation says it this way, Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Now, as Christians, as disciples of Jesus Christ, Paul tells us here that we're not to be those who are seeking revenge, uh, seeking out vengeance. Uh, and, and that's, you know, to repay evil with more evil. Uh, you know, planning out, oh boy, he did this to me and I cannot wait to get him back. Or she said this about me, man, I can't wait to get them back. Uh, you know, it's interesting, one of the first things that kind of popped into my mind with this uh, was uh, road rage, a good example of this today. Uh, it seems as if after COVID uh, that uh, much of the world has gone mad and the roadways are no exception. 
Uh, people have forgotten how to drive, or maybe they haven't forgotten. They're just plain dog rude uh, and don't care about cutting you off. Or, you know, and if they do cut you off and you dare to honk your horn, they then flip you off and uh, you know, uh, just continue uh, in their wickedness. Uh, it's, it's kind of a crazy thing, but we can all get caught up in it. Uh, this morning, coming to church here, me and Talia, as I'm driving, uh, we, you know, we're in a place, and it's already a slow zone, okay? It's 35 miles an hour, and the people in front of us are going 30 miles an hour. So your pastor is driving behind them, uh, just uh, ready to, you know, run them off the road, if you will, and... Uh, we did go around them finally not sure if it was a legal place to go around them but uh and we and i thought as i passed them i said now watch it's going to be somebody on their way to church this morning there's pastor bill he's in a hurry this morning <laughs> we have to be careful of this and when somebody does do something now we didn't drive by them and give them the birdie or any other you know thing like that we didn't wave hello uh, but you, you see these videos today of road rage, and, and, and sometimes we laugh, but most times it's really a sad thing. It's a tragic thing. You see somebody who's cut somebody else off, so they have to cut them off, and they don't just cut them off. They then slam on their brakes, and then, you know, there's always somebody there videoing it, by the way, if you've noticed. And, and then, you know, sometimes they'll get out of their car, and there's a physical altercation. They'll assault the other person, all because somebody wouldn't let them in, or they're driving crazy, or this and that. I saw a video uh, this last summer. Some fella has happened here in Portland, Oregon, and, and some guy got out and he opened up the back of his trunk and he got a sword out of his trunk. And he's going after this other guy. You're just like, hey, you can't make this stuff up. Well, especially in Portland. It's Portland, at least, you know. But, you know, again, it's the propensity of human beings. If you, somebody does something wrong to us, we want to not just get them back, but we want to get them back worse. That's how we are. We want to not just repay. So it doesn't turn, it's not just justice. It, it turns into vengeance. It turns into revenge. And, you know, uh, uh, Peter talks about this very thing as well. Turn with me, please, to 1 Peter chapter 3. He talks about the same thing, 1 Peter chapter 3. Now remember, we're not to, you know, basically repay anyone evil for evil, but give thought and do what is honorable in the sight of all. Peter says it this way, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love his brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil, or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Uh, he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Notice there in verse 12, before we come back to Romans, notice he says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. You know what, guys and gals, the Lord is always watching you. He's always watching me. Now, this isn't in the way that you might think. I heard, you know, years ago, we had one of our old bosses at the Word for Today at Calvary Costa Mesa, Jeff. And he came in and he was sharing the story of his son that Sunday had gotten in trouble at Sunday school. He was a little five or six-year-old boy. And, and, you know, he had been talking during class, apparently, and the teacher got him in trouble and said, Do you know the Lord is always watching you? And so Jeff's son was crying, came home and just like, you know, is, is God always watching me? Like, is he always watching me to get me in trouble kind of thing? And, and Jeff thought for a moment, the Lord gave him some wisdom. And, and Jeff looked at his little son and said, you know what? It is true. God is always watching you. But you know why? Because he loves you so much, he can't take his eyes off of you. And that's how it is, guys and gals. You know, the Lord loves you and I so much. We, we, a lot of us have brought, been brought up in churches that teach us God the Father is like Zeus. 
just waiting to hammer you when you blow it, just waiting to zap you with that lightning bolt. Oh, Bill blew it again, zap. Oh, he did it again, zap. And it's almost like he has fun, and that's all God. That is not the God of the Bible. Maybe you were raised with a father who was hard or even abusive. And don't look at God like you look at your father, or maybe the father that wasn't there. We are to look at God not through the lens of our own experience, but through the lens of the Word of God, through the Scriptures. He is the God that loves you. He is the God that loves you so much, He sent His only begotten Son to die for you and for me. He, he, he sent His Son. He loved us even while we were yet sinners. So again, He is always keeping His eyes upon us. So again, we need to be honorable when even others are not. Now, I don't know about you, but my heart goes, well, Why? Why, Lord, this isn't fair. It's not fair if somebody else isn't being honorable, that I have to be honorable, somebody else does something bad. You know, look, guys and gals, simply put, it's not fair. You're right. Simply put, it's not fair, but it's not about being fair. It's about bringing glory to God. It's about remembering that not only God is watching you, but other people are watching you too. You know, I remember years ago, I just to become a Christian, I was a, a brand new baby Christian, and I went out on a date, and uh, we were driving down the 55 freeway, and uh, down towards Newport Beach, and I got a flat tire, and pulled off, and go to get the spare, the spares flat, and thankfully, though, there was right by an off-ramp, and there was a, a gas station right at the end, they patched the tire, hour or so later, we get back on the road, and my date was sitting there just literally staring at me. Now, I know I'm good looking, and it's hard to get your eyes off me, but <laughs> this wasn't that. I'm just kidding. Um, and I'm like, what? What's, what's wrong? You know, what's going on? She goes, I can't believe that you didn't cuss the whole time that, you know, with your tire. And I'm like, I didn't? Oh, that's awesome. Because <laughs> I, I, I didn't even realize it, but God was doing a work. And she, you know, wasn't a Christian. She was, had professed a faith in Christ. I realized she wasn't a Christian that night. But, but here's the thing. You know, God is working in and through us for his good pleasure. And people are watching. People are taking note whether we realize it or not. Even if they think we think they're watching for bad reason. But we need to understand that it's not about being fair. It's about bringing glory to God. It's about being a witness in the world that we are living in. Uh, and again, uh, it's about gaining the chance as we die to self to witness to people, to, to, to show them what a true Christian really is all about, all for the glory of God. Now, you don't have to turn there. I'm going to give you the general story of what's happening in Acts chapter 5. Uh, the apostles and disciples, they're out witnessing for Jesus, man, they're on fire. Uh, they're excited. They're, uh, they're uh, in uh, Jerusalem. They're at the temple. They're witnessing, and they get arrested by the religious leaders. They're thrown in prison, and in the middle of the night, an angel comes, wakes them up, and says, hey, come on, we're, we're getting you out of here. Get them out of there, but go back to the temple and share the gospel, share the good news. So they go off, and they're doing that, and, and, and the chief priest and everything, it's like, hey, let's get those you know, followers of Jesus in here. We need to check them out. We need to get them in trouble. And So the, the officers go to get the prisoners, and the doors are locked. The, the, the guards are outside the door. They open it up, and nobody's in there. So they come back, and they tell the chief priest, too, we went there. The doors are locked. Nobody's there. And then one of the other guards goes, hey, look out in the courtyard. Isn't that the guys you're talking about out there? And they're out witnessing for Jesus. And so uh, the chief priests send the guards again. But basically they said, hey, be a little nicer this time because we don't want to get the people mad at us. So they bring them in. It's like, didn't we tell you not to be, you know, witnessing, not to be out talking about Jesus Christ? And, you know, they basically said, did we not strictly command you not to teach in his name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter... And the other apostles answered, we ought to obey God rather than men. And so uh, they didn't care. Uh, they, you know, said that right to their face. Uh, and then, by the way, it tells us there in the, in the account that they were beaten. Uh, so they're falsely imprisoned for no reason. Then they're beaten by these religious leaders. You know, so what did they do? They went off and they planned how to get back at the religious leaders. Hey, let's plan a revolt. 
Uh, let's plan, you know, a way of revenge. No, uh-uh. It says, so they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for his name. Not looking for revenge, not looking, uh, you know, to get, you know, the other people there come up. And by the way, they deserved it. They deserved some comeuppance. They deserved to get in trouble, but they didn't care. And they just were out, and, and, and again, their heart wasn't even, it's like, well, gosh, can you believe that happened? Or, no, dude, it's like, woohoo! We've been, we're, man, we, were, we suffered now for the name of Jesus. And again, what a blessed thing, their eyes were on Jesus the whole time. And they didn't care, they, they weren't downtrodden, they weren't whatever, they were rejoicing because they could bring glory to the Lord. Look at verse 18, back in our text, it continues. And and the same thought, he says, if if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Uh, You could almost say this is kind of the the main subject verse for the whole scriptures that we're looking at this morning. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. As Christians, we are called, we are commanded to do all that is within our means to live at peace with all people you know uh when i was a kid growing up and and some of you have heard me say this before uh one of my 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 biggest hero was john wayne when i was a kid i I, you know my mom and dad had let us kids have a little black and white television and dude every chance i had usually saturday afternoons sometimes sunday afternoons they had john wayne movies on and i was always watching the duke man just You know, because he was always out there serving up the comeuppance, always standing up for what's right and this and that. I still remember watching, I was probably nine or ten, maybe eight, watching uh, The Sands of Iwo Jima. And as I'm watching the movie, uh, something inexplicable happened. Something that rocked my world. I remember it to this day. John Wayne got killed. John Wayne, the Duke, got killed. I I cried. I was crying. I'm a oh, they killed the Duke. You know, and, and it just was it, it, it shattered me. And later on, I'd see some movies where, you know, the Duke was a bad guy. I never watched those movies again. Because in my mind, the Duke was always just the good guy. He'd always get the bad guys. They'd get their comeuppance. But you see, guys and gals, uh, I know a lot of us here maybe like John Wayne, but we're not called to be like John Wayne. Even as Christians, we are called to be like Jesus Christ. We need to to recognize this and understand this, that we are called to be like Jesus. Not like, you know, the movies, not like, you know, our favorite musicians or whatever it is, but to be like Jesus. And, and, And I think as Christians, especially American Christians, we need to remember this, that we are first and foremost to be men and women of God. First and foremost, men and women filled with the Spirit of God, walking in accordance to the Word of God. And and our command here, because we love the Lord, is to, as much as it depends on us, to live peaceably with all. To go out of our way to live at peace with everyone I meet, or you meet as well. I remember years ago, I was still, you know, I was a younger Christian, and There was a fellow we met at Calvary Costa Mesa. His name was Gerald. He was a tall, lanky guy. Loved the Lord. Probably about 20 years older than uh, me. And and so he'd play basketball with all the guys and gals there on Sunday nights. And we got to know him very well. And uh, he was an on-fire Christian. Loved the Lord and very outspoken for Jesus. And he was sharing that he and a bunch of uh, people, guys, went out to... uh, Uh, was it Hollywood, West Hollywood, to share the gospel. And that's a real hot spot for homosexuals and stuff. And so as they're sharing the gospel, a group came up to them and said, you guys can't be down here talking about sin and salvation. And we're yelling at them, gotten them in the, getting, you know, in their face. And one guy actually turned and hit Gerald right in the face. And I remember Talia and I were sitting there like, whoa, what did you do? He's all, well, Jesus told me to turn the other cheek. So I turned the other cheek. You know what he did? And we're like, what? He hit my other cheek. (laughs) And then I said, that's it. Jesus just told me to turn the other cheek. And then I popped him in the face. (sighs) Now, (laughs) 
Gerald had done everything as it was possible as far as it depends upon him to leave, live peaceably with this fella. Was it right for him to, to fight back? Uh, was it wrong of him? Uh, you know, he let the guy get two hits in. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what, 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 if it was right or wrong. But I will say that he did everything as far as it depends on him to live peaceably. I, I think it's a sad thing today. I think part of what's happened within the church today is this kind of passive, passivism. No, no, I can't. What's the passive? Passive? Anybody can say it? Them? Passive, blah, blah. <laughs> so it's the passivists, you know, with passivism. There we go. But it's crept into the church. And, and in America and all around the world, especially within a lot of your, um, what we call Western countries, if you will, there's been the demasculization of men as well. And basically, uh, you know, to where it's gone to a place that is actually unbiblical, even within the church, to, to be this Christian nice guy, to be this Christian nice gal, to the point where a lot of people won't even share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, it may offend someone. It will offend someone if you tell people Jesus promised that. You know, Jesus promised that people will be offended. Jesus said, look, they, they hate me, the master. How much more are they going to hate you once I'm gone? And so we need to understand this. And, and yet, as far as it is possible, and so as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And guess what, guys and gals? That's not always going to be able to happen. We need to go out of our way and not seek vengeance. But we also need to be those who are standing up for what is righteous what is godly, what is good. And to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves, it should uh, grieve us when we see the lawlessness that is taking place around our country. And uh, we need to understand that we do as much as we can, again, so far as it depends on you to live peaceably with all. Now, Paul continues in verse 19. We're going to keep talking about this. He says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So even here we're commanded, notice it says, not most times, not sometimes, but never avenge yourselves. In the Greek, avenge there is retaliate, punish, avenge. Uh, and again, this is not talking about justice, by the way. And there is a place for justice. This is talking about us avenging, uh, using our wrath against other men, other women, because notice what God says. He says here, basically, look, I got your back. Look, vengeance, you know, leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Uh, and so we need to understand that God promises to repay. You know, Psalm 37, 28 says this, for the Lord loves justice, he does not forsake his saints, they are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 35, vengeance is mine and recompense. Uh, Deuteronomy, uh, or the same uh, in, in the New Living, I will take revenge, I will pay them back. God will take revenge and you need to rest in that. I need to rest in that. As a matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, we see towards the end of days, in, in chapter 19, verse 1, after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia! salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. God will avenge. That's part of the, the wrath of God to come. That is part of what's the tribulation, the great tribulation to come. Look back in our text, verse 20. He goes on to say, to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by doing so you will heap burning coals on his head. So the first part of that there, uh, instead of getting revenge on our enemies, we're to bless them. Uh, we're to love them, Jesus said. Don't hate, hate, love those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Uh, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Now, what's interesting, these two positive commands, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, you know, give them something to drink. 
Now, it's interesting because the words feed him in the Greek literally say feed him abundantly. Feed him indulgently. So don't give him the scraps of your meal that you have left over uh, in the fridge. Give him the filet mignon that you have or give him the best. Give them the best indulgently. If they're thirsty, we give them something to drink. We don't spit in their water first. We give them something to drink to bless them. Again, the thought here is, look, in the name of Jesus, let me bless you. You might hate me, but by Jesus Christ, I love you. I'm going to bless you because God has commanded me. And as a living sacrifice, I'm enabled by his Holy Spirit to do this. And so, hey, in the name of Jesus, here's some good food. Here's some good drink. You know, it's the same thought here is that you're being a good witness and that you might soften a hardened heart. It's the same thing that happens in 1 Peter again. You don't have to turn there again, but in chapter 3, verse 1, it says this when talking about marriage. He said, in the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Then even if some do refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. We profess the gospel we speak the gospel, but we need to be living the gospel too. It, it can't just be something that we say we believe. It has to be something that we're living out. It has to be something that makes us different because Jesus Christ is different. God is different. And, and so, again, notice he goes on to say, for by doing so, you will heat burning coals on his head. Now, I used to say, woo, yes. Okay, I don't get all this. I don't understand why it got to be so nice, Lord. I'm be just being real. But, you know, I can't take revenge and stuff, but you're going to heat burning coals on their head, Lord. Yeah, roast them, dude. <laughs> just toast them. But, <laughs> that was my flesh, by the way. It's interesting, in, e in ancient Egypt, there was a tradition to walk around with a pan of hot coals on their head when a person was seeking to show others that they were sorry or repentant over something they had done. Now, most of the commentators believe that, um, you know, this heaping of burning coals on their head actually means this. Let me read this to you. Um, that he was actually speaking of something like the Lord will melt their hardened hearts and their minds through your doing good to them. You know, their hearts are so cold, their minds are so rock solid. But when we do things, the Lord can use that, to, you know, like burning coals on it to, to bring warmth and to melt that hardened heart. Uh, you know, again, I, I love this. You know, and that is to be our hope and prayer. Remember, that's what David did with Saul. Here's King Saul, always trying to kill David, kill, trying to kill David. And on two different occasions, the Lord basically, you know, here he, he, could, here he is to kill, but he said, no, 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 I'm not going to kill God's anointed. Instead, he blessed Saul, and in the end, Saul ended up saying, hey, I'm sorry, I blew it, even though we don't know how real that repentance was because he went back and tried to kill David again. But here's the thing. That's how we're to be. We're to be like Jesus, who upon the cross, when being reviled, imagine people you know, walking by you. You're on the cross. You're already been, you've been whipped 39 times. Uh, with a cat of nine tails, you've been beaten mercilessly. They, they said that he was basically unrecognizable. We don't, even when they say Jesus was beaten there, do you know that they literally would play a game? When they, remember when it says they covered his eyes and they hit him and, you know, guess who hit you? They would, all, they would play this game and they would all hit Jesus as hard as they could except for one guy in the room. And then they'd take the blindfold off and say, okay, who didn't hit you? And if you couldn't guess, they'd do it again, and you'd, they'd go through it. He was, his face was probably, and so he's up there, he's in pain, he's dying, and people are walking, well, ha, 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 look at this guy up here, you know, you know hey, if you're God, then call on God, come on down, if you're this and that. You know, I don't know about you, but I just would have used a pinky right there, just whoop, zap, dude, you're, you're dead, zoop, zap, dude. And thank the Lord he's not me. Thank the Lord he's not you. You see, Jesus showed, Lord, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's to be our heart. And by the way, it can only be our heart as we're filled by the Spirit of God. It can only be our heart as we're living sacrifices unto the Lord. Now look verse 21. It says, Do not be <clears throat> overcome by evil, 
excuse me, but overcome evil with good. New Living says, do not let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. You see the rain's coming down, re-emphasizing the authority here. A paraphrase says it this way, don't let evil get the best of you, get the best of evil by doing good. Uh, Matthew Henry, the, the great commentator, wrote this about this verse. He said this, Let not the evil of any provocation that is given you have such a power over you or to make such an impression upon you as to make you lose yourself, to disturb your peace, to destroy your love, to ruffle and upset your spirits, to bring you to a place of sinfulness, or to bring you to study or attempt any revenge. He that cannot quietly bear an injury is perfectly conquered by it already. You see, guys and gals, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we can bear these injuries. We can set them at the foot of the cross. We can find strength. We can find love in Jesus. Don't be overcome by evil. Today, uh, we live in a very wicked world. The Bible says that in the last days, uh, it would be like it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. And uh, very wicked days, if you go back and look. Uh, there's a lot of evil out there seeking to overcome us. Even today, uh, there was supposed to be, you know, at evangelical churches and Catholic churches, there's a great call to go and protest uh, by those who were for the murder of babies in the womb. And so they said, go and disrupt, go and protest. And you know, uh, the, the scripture here, we, uh, the, the board got together and we said, well, let's tell the leadership, hey, if, if this does happen here, and we're kind of under the radar a little bit, and we're very thankful that the Lord has done that to a point. And, uh, but we said, look, if any protesters do show up, you know, make sure you go bring them some donuts, bring them some drinks, and, and just bless them. Say, thanks for coming to church today. Uh, we're glad you're here. We're praying for you. And, and sincerely, and, and not be a jerk about it, but mean it sincerely. Bless them. And that's how we need to be as Christians. We're not, we can't be overcome by evil. It is a mad world today. Wherever you stand, if you don't believe these are the last days or not, go read your Bible, and I think you'll see more and more that they are. But th this is a mad world that's going madder. Uh, there is an old movie, uh, probably one of the longest movies ever made. It's called, It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. You know what, guys and gals, the world today, it's a mad, 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 mad world. And it's getting crazier. It's an evil world. Lawlessness is abounding more and more. Those in positions of authority, they're calling good evil and evil good. They're calling darkness light and light darkness. Uh, this is a world where justice is being called vengeance. So true justice and vengeance, people, maybe even some people here watching, you don't even know the difference between vengeance and justice. There is to be justice, and by the way, Next week, you know, if we're all here into chapter 13, God talks about one of the reasons that he gave us governance was to protect us from this stuff, was to protect us from evil people and, and those who would break the laws. Now, as Christians, though, we need to be in this mad, mad world to be watching our hearts. Uh, Jesus described it. He said, look, man, because lawlessness is going to increase, the love of many is going to wax cold. Can I ask you here this morning, how's your love doing? Is it waxing cold because you see all the wickedness around us? Are you so caught up with the Johnny Depp trial uh, and seeing all this stuff going on there? Are you so caught up in the things of the world, uh, the wickedness that we see? Are, are you losing it? You know, have you come to a place where your heart is growing cold? Beloved in Christ, be careful in these days. Don't, don't let evil overcome you. Overcome evil instead with good. You see, the Bible in Thessalonians says that even now, 
that the Holy Spirit is a restrainer. He is holding back the wickedness. He is holding back the darkness. Believe it or not, could you imagine what it would be like when he is taken out of the way? And there will come a time. But even now, and I believe what this is referring to, is the Holy Spirit within the believers within the church. I I firmly do. This is his ministration, part of his work right now. And through you and me as we are being the light. It's no coincidence, by the way, that is the same as this evil and lawlessness is growing. The Bible tells us there'll be a great falling away from the church. And we are in the midst of this great falling away. Up in Canada this last week, a church got together like this and they had a lady come rolling up. Her family in the front row, the grandkids in the back row, the rest. And as they were singing, how great thou art. They injected her with poison and murdered her. And they celebrated this in the name of Christ. Wickedness is in the church, beloved. There is the great falling away. And yet, by the word of God and by the grace of God, we can stand. We can stand firm. We can overcome evil with good by the spirit of God. While this grieves us and even righteously angers us, and we stand against it, by the way, we need to watch our hearts. We can never seek revenge. We can never seek vengeance. But we should be those who love justice. Those who are seeking justice and to stand up against this wickedness. They are two different things, guys and gals. Leviticus 19.16 says, Do not spread slanderous gossip among the people. Do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened. I am the Lord. Psalm 82, 3 and 4. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. Open your mouth through the speechless. Proverbs 31, 8. Uh, In the cause of all who are appointed to die, open your mouth. Judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Isaiah 117, learn to do good. Seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the cause of orphans, fight for the rights of widows. Look, guys and gals, this is not, these scriptures today aren't say be passive, don't stand up against evil. But again, it does say, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We stand up, and even if we ended up, let's say, going to war. Now, there's been many wars fought in over the last 2,000 years. Even if we were to go to war, we don't go hating those people we're fighting against. We go defending the people that are behind us. And there's a huge difference. You don't go with the hatred towards those people. Matter of fact, I'd probably be praying for everyone that we are fighting against. And and you know what, guys and gals? We need to be those who are unafraid in these days, not to be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Not our own goodness, but the goodness of God. For there's no one good but God, Jesus said. And we need to remember this. That even in the midst of this, as as we are standing up and, and we are standing upon the word of God, we are now being called evil. And so this world is so, there, there's a tsunami of misinformation. I hate to say it, but every time I hear somebody on the left speak anymore, pretty much every time they, they really mean the exact opposite of what they're saying. It, it's just how it is. And sadly, some on the right too. I, I'm not one of those that says it's equal because it's not. But here's the thing. Even as what we are doing is we stand up and we preach the word of God. And there will be those that say, the the Bible is evil. The Bible is wicked. You are wicked. You are evil because you believe in the Bible. We're not shaken. We know that this is good, that God's word is good. It is pure. It is holy. It is just. And it is perfect. And that's who God is. And by the way, those people who will call you names, those people who will call you evil, inside Romans 1 and 2 tell us clearly they know what they're doing is sin. But they're so, their hearts are so hardened, they love the darkness so much that they simply hate the light. And so they will fight against us. Look, guys and gals, may we always stand up and walk in the mighty ways and stand upon the firm truths of the word of God We might not always know who's telling us the truth. You know, Donald Trump, okay, I just got to say this real quick. Donald Trump is not the Messiah. 
Donald Trump is not God. Most of us, we all know this, right? But I just want to say this. Look, Donald Trump is still a guy in need of salvation from everything I've seen, even though he made a profession of faith. But look, we don't love the, the, this guy like, you know, like he's, you know, the greatest guy that's ever been, but we also don't hate him like, you know, there's an, un, an, an unnatural hatred as well. Look, if he were to run again, which I think he's gonna, I hope that he doesn't. I truly do. I hope he doesn't run. And I hope, too, that if he does, that I'm, I'm gonna vote against him in the primary. I will. But if he makes it to the presidential and all they're putting up is someone that's pro-abortion, pro-homosexuality, pro all these things, of course you'll have my vote again. And yes, I will vote. I think it's a responsibility of every Christian to vote. It's one of the talents that we've been, all been given before God. So here's the thing. Look, we don't look to these men. Donald Trump could be the Antichrist. Do you know? The, I mean, he's liked so much. Well, Barack Obama could be the Antichrist. We don't know. We're not going to know, by the way. We'll be raptured before he's revealed. It tells us that clearly in the Bible. But here's the thing. Just be careful in the midst of the deception. Don't be overcome by the evil. Don't be deceived by the evil. Be a man, be a woman of the word of God. Not just what you hear Pastor Bill preaching. Not just what you hear Jack Hibbs or others preaching. Those are good to reinforce what you're already reading and learning in the word of God yourself. Let's pray. Father, as we read these words today, I pray for each one of us, Lord, that maybe even inside we still have those that we want to seek revenge against, Lord. They've hurt us so deeply. Lord, maybe we still have those we want to seek out vengeance against. Father, we pray even now uh, that you would help us, Lord, that we would just do as you've told us to forgive them, Lord, because we've been forgiven so much, and by your grace we can do that now. Lord, we pray instead that you would actually bless them, Lord. We pray that we would be those seeking to overcome the evil of this world by your goodness, Lord, the goodness of your word, the goodness of you in us and in your church, your Holy Spirit working in this world, Lord. Father, we lift ourselves up to you, Lord, and, and just may we be those that are just sold out, living sacrifices for you. Lastly, Lord, I want to lift up all the moms here, Lord, those watching, those listening. Would you bless them this day? Uh, would you fill them afresh, Lord, as they continue to be those moms, Lord? Would you heal, Lord? Would you strengthen, Lord? Would you use them for your glory? Lord, we also pray for those moms who've lost a son or a daughter, Lord, and uh, just pray for your comfort upon them this day. And those who have lost their mom, missing them extra today, would you bless and comfort and strengthen and be glorified in all of this? Lastly, Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together, please.